If you want to spend five days grading a music video that should take you four hours, or if you want to spend two months grading a documentary that should be done within a week, then go ahead and just keep using LiftCam again to balance your footage. But if you're like me and you like extra time to watch Netflix, play FIFA, spend thousands of dollars on ultimate team packs, or hang out with your family, take a vacation, then this video is for you. And the technique I'm gonna show you in this video is so simple that you're gonna be like, this just can't be right. Pro colorists can't be working like this, but here's a little secret. As you become a professional, your process becomes more streamlined and it just gets simpler and easier and more straightforward. And when you watch something, Dune or whatever have you, and it just looks so like chef's kiss so good, usually, is just done in a very gentle, soft way. And they're not doing all this extra try hard things that we all do as beginner colorists. I mean, I am saying this because I was that. Like that's just what I did when I started grading because in my head, I'm self-taught. So I just thought it has to be complicated or else it just can't be right. And if you wanna see more content like this, then do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. Let's get into it. All right, so now we're in Resolve and the two clips that I'm using, uh, you're gonna get access to that because I love you guys. All I need in return is uh, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. So I specifically picked shots that are completely off balance. I mean, look at this, right? So there's so much green seeping into the image and that's not just the foliage, like the skin tones are hella green. Like look at where the skin tones are sitting compared to the skin tone indicator right here. I'm using only two scopes because these are the best scopes when you are balancing your footage. So you got waveform and it's set to colorized uh, right here, set to colorize in the Y channel. And then you got your vector scope and then we have the skin tone indicator turned on. And that's all you need, right? Because if I can make my colorized waveform some white looking white in there, like this shirt, and I can see it right here, that means I'm going in the right direction. And then obviously in the vector scope, if I start bringing things in the middle, the more they are in the cross here, right in the middle, like the better the balance is. And now if I take you to this shot, see like how these two are completely extreme examples. And that's what I wanted to do for you to like really see the approach and why there are some wrong ways and then I'll show you the right ways and even a writer way. So get pumped about that. This is just uh, footage from Ari Alexa converted to DaVinci White Gamut. This is the working color space that I use. If you wanna learn more about that, I'm gonna have a link to a deeper dive in the description below. And then we're taking DaVinci White Gamut, we're converting it to Rec 709. Same thing is happening here. This is from the same music video, got it? So I'm just gonna hide this for now and uh, let's come in here. So anybody who starts to grade, the first thing that you see are these three wheels right here, lift, gamma, gain, okay? So if I'm gonna see an image like that, I'm gonna go, let's actually just park it on a frame that's like a good representation. Actually, the first frame is pretty good. So I'm just gonna go in my gamma and I'm gonna go, I wanna take that green out. So then I'm gonna go somewhere around here. And on paper, this has started to look really good. Now, the problem is that you're seeing like all that red that we're bringing in in the shadows, like even her hair and what's happening. And even like in the sky, there's so much red that's coming in now. So then I'm gonna go on my lift and I'm gonna try to take that out. So I'm gonna do something like that. And I'm giving our beginners a, a benefit of the doubt that they'll just be that comfortable with lift gamma gain to understand what's going on and what they need to do to fix that. And now we're here, I'm gonna take my gain and I'm just going to be like, well, where does my gain need to go? Like now, the shirt is looking good because you also got to remember it's the daytime. So it's going to have a little bit of warmth embedded in there. And now I just feel like, you know, we went too far with my gamma. So I'm going to pull that back. And you see this game of whack-a-mole that it becomes. And now just imagine if you're not experienced and if you're working like that and how much time it's adding, right? Not to mention if now I go, well, I want to add some juice in there now. So like, I'm going to bring my uh, lift down, I'm gonna open my gamma up a little bit, I'm gonna bring my gain down, and something like this, like we're looking good. So now imagine you have like 600 shots in a music video and you have to do that to every single clip. And all my tutorials are based on my past mistakes. So I don't want anybody to get offended when you're watching my tutorials, like I'm making fun of beginners out there. I was a beginner for the longest time because I'm self-taught. So I just picked up these things along the way and I don't want you guys or anybody to be making that or those mistakes that I've made during my journey. So this is what the process would be, right? 
And we can just try to like redo the entire process again on this shot too. So I'm going to start with my gamma and I'm going to park it somewhere around here. But now um, like look at the wood in the back. It's like the wood should never look like that. So I'm going to go in my lift then and like raise it up. So like the, uh, the wood is looking the color that it should be. But now my gain is just looking like really red and weird. So I'm going to control that and I'm going to pull it down. And then my gamma, my skin tones are still not looking, looking right. So I'm like maybe somewhere around here is better. And now I'm going to pull my lift down. I'm going to raise my gain up and I'm going to be somewhere around here. So let's just say we take this version and we save it. And then we go here and we save this version. Now I'm going to go back. So don't do this way. This is why we don't use lift gamma gain for balancing. There's nothing wrong with lift gamma gain. Like it can come in handy like doing little nudges that we will need, um, but it is not good for initial balancing, okay? So now let's look at the second way to do this, which is your HDR palette temp and tint. Now the problem with this is, let's go here and undo this. Now the problem with this method, let me show you. A shot like this that needs a pretty heavy handed shift, right? To bring it away from like this quadrant where it's sitting, we will just choke if we're using our HDR palette temp and tint. So let me show you what I mean. So obviously we're seeing that there's a lot of like red and yellow in there. So I'm just going to go and keep cranking my temp all the way to try to bring this in the middle. But like, look what happened. I ran out of space. So now I can't push it more. What about the tint? Like I want to maybe add a little bit more green back in there. And I'm doing that and see like, I can't like, how can I push it more over? Like I just ran out of space. And I can't do that. So this is extremely limiting. And uh, so we shouldn't even try it on the other shot. I mean, this just does not work. It's very, very limiting. It's good, perceptually, like pretty good. It is very close to like that photometric quality, like if you would have done something like that in camera. So it is giving you that, but it's extremely limiting. So then what is our third way to do this? Used to be my all-time favorite. I was using it forever and ever and ever. If I just take you right here in color, and if we go to these printer lights, full printer light, half printer light, quarter printer light. So this is just basically like if you have a numpad, you'll have these numbers, right? Six, nine, five, eight, four, seven. So if you memorize this, and then you just like hit that button, and this is basically like looking at the image, I want to pull what does this look like? If I look at my vector scope, the image is really red and yellow. So we want to subtract that. So if I go to my printer lights and I just like add blue, this is what I'm doing right now. Your yellow is right here. Your blue is right here. So we're subtracting yellow by adding blue. Now it's too red. So what can we do? Let's pull away some red. So I'm just going to subtract some red. And if I subtract some red, I end up here. Now what is like, did I subtract too much red? Do I have to add maybe one more yellow and keep the image somewhere around here? And now we end up here. Now it's looking too green. So let's pull some of the green out. So I just go subtract green. Okay. And now we're right in the middle. So like, look at how it was just like solving this puzzle, if you will. And we were just looking at our image and it was very simple. It's just going plus this minus that. And we ended up here in a pretty good freaking spot. And now at this point, if I even if I just go back here, lift gamma gain, and if I just do this, and if I raise that up, and now if I compare this version to our lift gamma gain version, you're seeing the difference? It's like night and day. I mean, this is our lift gamma gain. And then this is just with our printer lights and how clean this process is. And that's why this is tried and tested process that's been used in the film industry for the longest time. I mean, Christopher Nolan still uses that. So that's the process called color timing where all they got is their printer lights, red, green, blue channels. And it's like, what do you want to do? And when you make these shifts, these are shifts on your entire image instead of like turning and twisting your image. So if I go to this grayscale image, turn this off and kind of show you on this what I'm talking about. So it's like if I go in my printer lights, what we were just doing, which is right here, our offset, we take it here and we just like took the entire image in that direction. We take it here, we took the entire image in that direction. Whereas when we use lift gamma gain, we add green here. I'm just gonna give you an extreme example. And then we're adding yellow here and then we're adding something else here. And you're seeing like this banding and like this breakage that's happening. 
That will never, ever, ever happen if we're using our offset and wherever we want to take the image. It's going to be very, very smooth. Look at this Blade Runner vibe we got going on. So that's like a quick and simple way for you to understand the difference between doing it the printer light way compared to doing it the lift gamma gain way, which you're just like really messing with the actual colors that were present in the image. But, but this still took some time. Before we keep going, just want to take a second and let you guys know that for limited time only, 50% off on Freelance Colorist and Kazi's Toolkit Bundle. This is the biggest deal of the year. You do not want to miss out. Kazi's Toolkit Bundle will let you create Hollywood looks in minutes. It's absolutely pure magic. Or if you actually want to work on your foundation and become a color grading ninja, Freelance Colorist is the answer. Links to both are going to be in the description below. Check it out. Do not miss out on this opportunity. Let's get back to the video. Well, the fastest way to do this and the most consistent that I found, you guys have been watching me do this. I use this linear technique where I change the node to linear and you guys have been asking me to like, you know, show you what, what's really going on and why it's so good and superior. It's the go-to choice when it comes to visual effects. Like all the visual effects teams, like when you talk about After Effects or anything, when you get stuff from them, or if I'm working on a commercial where there's going to be a lot of like mats and like we're gonna be basically doing um, rotoing and stuff like that, all that stuff when it comes back, it's in linear color space. And then we have to like use color space transform to convert it back to whatever color space that we're going to be working in, right? And that's happening because in the linear color space, the every change that you make is very direct. It's like just plus and minus that thing that you're doing instead of like, you know, how everything in Resolve, and especially the primaries work, where you're adding brightness and you're removing brightness. Like there's so much more happening just by moving some trackballs and adding some color into your image. And that's what also inject like a lot of contamination that you do not get with linear. So now if I go here and turn, right click and just go to gamma and turn this to linear, nothing really happens. Then I have to go in my Luma mix and turn that off because if I don't turn this off, that's going to throw off the entire operation because the entire point of how we want to use our linear color space is for balancing. And we're only going to be messing with our gain. Your gain will become basically like your global offset, but even better. Like my experience is that it is so much faster to balance your footage and the results are just to die for. I mean, just watch this, right? So like now if I just go here and I'm basically just looking at my image and I'm going, I want to just go back and remove this. So I can just go on my gain and I can just start doing this. Like I wasn't even so much looking at my image. I was just like focusing right here in my vector scope and I moved it around and just that fast, we're done with our balance. And now what I have to do, because I'm working in my DaVinci white gamut color space, I'm going to put this to 0.335. So that was not the point at all. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click right here and 0.335. So that locks in my 18% gray. If you want to watch a video on what I'm talking about when it comes to contrast, I put out a banger. Link is going to be in the description. Check that video out. So now that we have this locked in, I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to use this to like actually do like whatever I want to do with my image. So I'm going to park it somewhere around here. And now if we go to our lift gamma gain compared to our our linear color space. I mean, just look at how much more meat we have and how every color and everything belongs and how fast we got here. And now we just go to the other shot and we're going to do the same exact thing. So I'm right here, right? So I'm just looking at my image. I'm going to right click. I'm going to turn this into linear. I'm going to kill this. And then I'm just going to go. I'm just looking at the shirt and I'm going to put a little bit of like warmth in there, everything just fell into place. I'm gonna click right here, I'm gonna do 335. So I'm gonna lock in my pivot and I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna park it right here. I mean, just look at this, guys. Like, look at this, how white and clean it looks. Look at what happened to the skin tones where the skin tones like just boom, like right on the money where they should be. Look at how beautiful her lips look, her shirt looks like the foliage in the back. Look at how good the clouds look and how fast was it? to just like hit a few buttons and we're right there. We just nailed it compared to like what we were doing with lift gamma again. And let's see how the lift gamma again looks. It is just so digital and lackluster, almost like when you 
started messing with DaVinci Resolve, like your images look like this. And you just always go, how can somebody make their images look like that? Like this looks so freaking good. Like what is this? And how can I get rid of this gunk? You saw how easy and fast this was. And I am demonstrating it and I'm taking my time to show you so we don't miss anything. And it's this fast. Now imagine if you're just blasting through and you have this dialed in. And then don't worry about right clicking and going and setting this up every single time because you know you can just build templates. Like if you go to my power grades, like I have all these fixed templates set up. You can do the same exact thing. And if you're interested to see a video about that, like, you know, comment below and I can do a video and just explaining like my entire process. But once you have that locked in, you just bring in a fixed node tree and that will already have this Luma mix set to zero and the linear already ready to go. And then you can just come in here and do this and just look at the results. Look at this gorgeous skin tone. I mean, this looks so good. It just looks like literally I dropped a freaking, the most gorgeous LUT available, dropped it on there and I'm ending up with these results. And same thing is happening here. I mean, just like, look at that. We retain the color of the wood in the back. All the other colors look so good. The hair looks so good. All of that. We didn't have to fight back and constantly go back and go, oh, yes, I made it look really good here, but now I've thrown it off over there. And there's absolutely no restrictions with this process. And what I noticed is like when it comes to shot matching, man, if you are working in the same scene and what we just did here, and if you would have just copy pasted that on like four other clips next to it, it would have been like, bam, you're just right there. You're ready to go. And then you can use your gain right here um, for exposure. And that works also just like your global offset exposure. But once again, like it just feels better, man. Like the way it just works is just like I'm adjusting my exposure in camera like how good this is and how it moves everything linearly. Um, I am absolutely in love with this process right here. And that's my go-to process. Ever since I switched to this uh, a while back, I just feel like I blast through my uh, grades and you guys should definitely give it a try. And once you do, you're not gonna be going back. And if you enjoyed this video, then just please do me a favor, pause the video for one second, smash the like button so it can be shared with more people that can benefit from this technique. If you have any content suggestions, drop them in the comment section below. Do not forget to take advantage of the sale, which will be ending soon. Links to both my freelance colorist masterclass and Kazi's toolkit bundle are in the description. Check it out. I'll see you guys on the other side. Oh.